Alice and Siri. Good morning. Well, actually, I was going to comment on the Jamaica coalition, the conservative liberal green coalition, but everything changed. Still, the weather report remains. So um, if I could have some water, that would be great. And uh, I'm grateful to Sebastian and co for translating. And I'm going to apologize for speaking a bit fast because I have so many topics. So I've cut them a bit. So let's start with something positive before the storm. So the bad weather I'm going to start with because people people uh, always tell me I'm spreading bad vibes, but I'll start with bad weather and, and end with summer. Okay, there are many people that work and live and act much as we do, and we see that these people come get into prison. Yesterday we heard uh, a Chinese blogger accused of terrorism or spreading democratic thought, actually is convicted to eight years in prison. Um, many bloggers working for democracy and human rights for years uh, in prison. In, in Turkey, Deniz Yücel, uh, representing many others for supposed terror uh, support, terrorism support without trial. And this year we learned that Basil Katabil, uh, a hacker, uh, open source activist from Syria uh, that was with Creative Commons and Wikipedia, and he died in prison probably uh, because of torture. We live in times when a TV addicted uh, sociopath is the most powerful man in the world. He watches the wrong TV stations. We live in times where we almost would have had a Jamaica coalition in Germany after the elections. I must admit we had placed certain hopes in that, which were disappointed when we heard about the results of the in, in exploring talks, which ended in, in the project to be abolished. Um, we thought we would have two parties in the coalition that at least on paper would be working for fundamental rights. Uh, possibly data retention would have gone perhaps in the next few years, further erosion of fundamental rights could have been averted. But if you look at the net politics uh, positions uh, that were on the paper, these were basically just industry positions. That was the, this, the conservatives didn't need the liberals and the greens for that. And the SPD, the social democrats, do like to join in. And as it seems, we know that social democrats like to turn uh, to turn back and uh, just f fall down. We have a new situation now. They are exploring another grand coalition, as I say. And in contrast to the last parliament, we'll have three. Op opposition parties that are at least on paper work for fundamental rights. Uh, the Liberals, the Left Party and the Greens have many engaged people in their ranks and in the parliamentary party who uh, do these things. And we have a new situation. We have one further opposition party that is for more surveillance. And if there are any people in this Congress who voted for the alternative for Germany, AFD, and think that that is compatible with the values of this Congress, that is not the case. It's not compatible. If, if you do not understand this, read the hacker ethic. If you still don't understand, read it again. And if you still don't understand, read the AFD manifesto or the... Uh, laws that the AFD has tried to uh, introduce into the state parliament in the federal states in Germany. The, this party stands for f f uh, taking down fundamental rights, more surveillance, and that is simply not compatible with the values of our society, with our community here. But what do we do when a new grand coalition is going to come? If uh, you can, of course, go ahead and strengthen the opposition parties and hope that uh, they might cooperate more, which I don't quite see coming because there is a lot of competition between them. We can hope that the opposition parties uh, will at least uh, have a certain race for, uh, in initiatives to call the government, government to account. And we can also try to influence the governing parties. The conservatives are not a source of much hope. There are people that are that share our values there, people that do care about fundamental rights, but many other people there that know that 
many of these people know that if they voice such concerns in the Conservative Party, they have no career and the career is m often more important to them. With the Social Democrats, it's rather different. Probably still we have about a 40, 60 percentage split of surveillance opponents and uh, fundamental rights uh, proponents against opportunists that think security perhaps will manage with the change of generations in the Social Democrats to have more people come forward and, and come to into top positions that do work for a better digital society. So what are the next years? What do we expect? Uh, Merkel, Chancellor Merkel has said that digitalization would become a top topic, would become her topic after so many years of net politics under her stewardships. Uh, that is quite an announcement. So this, this is a chancellor that calls the internet a new, new land recently. And fast internet for everyone, everywhere. Uh, this is an advert uh, which they keep putting up in Berlin. Basically just, um, well, they're trying to keep, keep the fight going basically and uh, keep a brave face. Um, and we have the debate whether there's going to be an internet minister. We had three potential internet ministers or even five in the last parliament where there were three parties in parliament in, in government. You have to split it up. Uh, and you know the result wasn't overwhelming. So the debate was, will there be just one internet minister? Will there be a state minister in the, in the chancellery? I'm a bit torn. On the, other, on the one side, on the one hand, it would be good if a good co coordination from the Chancellor perhaps would take place. But on the other hand, after so many years of Chancellor Merkel, I'm not quite sure that she will improve things. So on the other hand, I do not believe that we would get a strong internet ministry that would be independent from the uh, economy ministry, the transport ministry, and then all the other ministries that would get all the relevant uh, resources and the relevant uh, responsibilities from those other ministries. So it will be just a, a paper tiger, as it's uh, as you say in German. So uh, it, it doesn't really work, and uh, you can't just put the most fit people there that read about digitalization in the newspaper. That again is Chancellor Merkel, not in the picture, but it was her mistake that he became our European Commissioner for the Digital Economy. So if you look at what the last the federal government did. You have foremost, you must foremost uh, look at the area of surveillance. They regarded uh, Snowden as a feasibility study and they extended surveillance. They reintroduced data retention, although at the European level there are clear rulings that mass surveillance without cause uh, is illegal and is against fundamental rights. But that doesn't stop our federal government does not stop them from uh, from reintroducing blanket mass surveillance wherever they can, and they can do it in several places, unfortunately. And I forgot one thing, the state Trojan. Uh, again, something that the, the conservatives um, wanted to introduce, but probably did not understand at all that it's, it is a very bad joke. We thought they were making a joke, or they thought, but it is a very bad one with uh, false like wanna cry that broke more or less the whole internet because you were too stupid to look after those and that's what state trojans depend on and uh, we have a politics these days in the name of security that creates a lot of insecurity through things like the state trojan a new authority called CITES that is to uh, monitor social networks but f at least they don't get that much staff because the salaries are not overwhelming who would like to work for a meager salary, salary to create insecurity? Um, finding gaps uh, in systems, even from the black markets, and creating massive insecurity. So this massive insecurity is worrying if you look at several other debates that are uh, on the rise. The Internet of Things. We put uh, all kinds of things into the Internet. Uh, which makes a lot of sense. Uh, many of us sitting here know what we do, but we have the big problem that our parents start to connect devices as well, and they often do not know what they're doing. We have these days a situation where uh, in, uh, th in the electronic supermarkets you have old Android phones on sale with the 
ancient Android versions that are not being updated. So from the point of sale to our parents, I have so many security holes that it's a huge risk to consumers and a risk for a secure digital society. We need ways of for uh, consumer rights to be uh, enforced and for security to be introduced into networks. It's a huge debate about product liability where you have to be very clear. Uh, is open source disadvantaged? Are small makers disadvantaged? But if you look closely, uh, you have to look closely. How do you then get more security, more consumer rights? And for that, we need more people with expertise that join these debates and you always ask why why actually do we have such a bad net politics F earlier we used to say it's clear politicians don't know they didn't have they didn't know these days they do know a lot and if you don't if they don't know themselves they have they have assistants uh, advisors that give them the right kind of information but mostly they listen to the wrong interests on the other hand for uh, other topic on the grand coalition we will have Uh, the Netzwerk Durchsetzungsgesetz. Uh, we have this uh, since Friday, Saturday. Let's see what uh, will, will come to us there. The intention wasn't too bad. The intention was to do something against Facebook and shit, where Facebook and Co. put privatized societies where, where big parts of our digital communication are constituted. Uh, if you do participate or don't, most others do. And Facebook is not just Facebook, it's WhatsApp as well. And there's a big problem. The government thought, well, to solve it by making the situation a bit more complex. Well, com Facebook has very complex community standards, which are so complex, we don't really understand the logic. We, we think there is a community per person and just puts down dice, rolls dice to try some algorithms or something. Uh, and with uh, freedom of opinion, we have to think if private platforms that are too big to just be any platform, if these should have uh, tasks that the government actually has, um, to put through uh, criminal activities like Vaterschaftsverrat or uh, other things. Do you know how we have seven days? Oh. <laughs> They're juristical uh, tasks um, which get delegated to private actors. Uh, they get outsourced. So these get even more powerful. That's one of the problems. And we hoped that the judicial branch ministry would think that Facebook would put down some moderators but no, the moderators are just uh, bridge technology to more algorithms who will regulate our digital public and this can fail the absurd thing about all of this is and was the government has basically Deny, uh, relegated the Durchsetzung, the enforcement, the enforcement of Recht, right to these uh, people. It's a joke on Netzwerk Durchsetzungsgesetz, and I think it's time that we fight for more rights, put through more rights because they are too big to fail. They're there. We can get them away. We can build our alternatives, but if we are unlucky. Our f families are still at WhatsApp or Facebook. In other words, we have to see uh, to get more rights there. Why can't we have a takedown uh, thing where we can have... Um, why is there no guarantee like a new virtual service like WhatsApp or Facebook that we can and may be there At the moment we just get thrown out and that's a problem. Uh, other problems in the European area, European copyright reform, nobody's interested in this except for copyright lobbyists. On the one hand, 
Rechts, Leistungsschutzrecht, uh, like and uh, right. copyright. We know some filters. Uh, we're talking on thispolitik.org about it. We had a talk about it. Privacy of rechts. Uh, uh, where platforms with uh, cooperated with security forces of the European Union uh, to think about how to get out the terroristic stuff. Because what some people write in some right lands is terroristic in other. And people lose friends of Facebook once they're pursued for terrorism. Uh, these upload filters are, will going to, are going to come at latest with the corporate reform. And the hope is that the large suppliers such as Facebook uh, will check every single upload, whether it it's constitutes a corporate violation. But the problem with there is that you do these services not just uh, for Facebook and Google, but that Wikipedia has to employ, employ the same technologies as well. And if you were getting uh, enraged about these things earlier, about about network blocking earlier in 2009 these upload filters are far more dangerous actually but now to the somewhat more politic uh, positive things uh, the the nice weather there are some there's some good news the uh, disturber liability has finally gone that is if you r operate uh, an open Wi-Fi, you're not going to be responsible for what your users do on it. It took several years, uh, and that law, it may actually lead to network blocking, but at least the uh, disturbance liability has gone. Politicians uh, probably were too embarrassed about the whole complaints about so few open Wi-Fi's. And uh, there is an effect. Here's a map uh, with open hotspots, and you can easily see these are all hotspots in Berlin that are free or that are open. And these are the ones they, they're operated by Freifunk. Uh, so thanks a lot, Freifunk. You're doing great work. Uh, much better than the state of Berlin or Brandenburg have ever managed to do with all the taxpayers' money that they have. Another topic. We thought, well, net neutrality, that is over. We fought the fight. We had these images go make the rounds. That's the internet. With, without net neutrality, you have to buy in all sorts of passes for different areas of the internet. So we took care that good rules were established at the EU level. So throttling and blocking would be forbidden. It was better than we hoped for uh, because, you know, uh, Günther Oettinger was responsible for it and it was actually big pushed through against this world, but there was a loophole that we warned of, and and the kinds of laws that uh, that we've seen have all been abolished in the US by the Republicans, and now that this happens in the US, uh, we also have the loophole of zero rating being used in Europe. Zero rating means throttling and blocking is forbidden, so we actually prefer some services that are going to be exempt from volume caps, but everyone else, of course, is now being discriminated because they're not being exempted. The telecom started with stream on, Vodafone followed suit, even worse actually, this is exactly the graphics that we were talking about, that we were showing earlier as a warning, it's just, now it's reality, just less colorful. And then the topic that we will face in the next three, four years, how do we, de how do we treat with algorithms, with artificial intelligence? Most of you know that algorithms are nothing new, they always existed in computer science. Algorithmic systems have been developed for years and years, Joseph Weizenbaum knew. Uh, it's hardly possible to look through these algorithms, but there is a new dimension. There are breakthroughs in machine learning, uh, an uh, analysis capacities, there are new platforms, more dynamic, complex black boxes, and they are being used in very sensitive areas, predictive policing, credit scoring, regulating the public, YouTube, uh, regulating public arenas, uh, such as YouTube, so algorithms become quite a problem. We need rules, regulations, and other approaches to see how, we, how do we get accountability, how do we get democratic control of the, the way algorithms are used. Uh, 10 minutes, we had 15 just a moment ago, 10 minutes left. Okay, let's imagine health sector, uh, coronary disease, uh, diseases. If, it's, if it gets possible to uh, develop a kind of recommendation system, so p patients are being recommended certain therapies, the question is what data is, are these algorithms being treat, uh, trained on? Uh, does this uh, apply all the kinds of data that fitness apps collect, perhaps? What kinds of things should be part of this recommendation? Now, who will get an operation at the end and who won't? How is this going to be accountable? 
uh, is this going to be calculated by, uh, by hospital load or uh, the reputation of a doctor? Will, will that be determined by whether they operate or not? But that's just one of many aspects. What can you do? And I think we should not use met metaphors such as algorithm uh, MOT or uh, we need a control regulating instances uh, and uh, it's a wide area health regulation health algorithms are quite different from facebook algorithms this is about business secrets that you have to be uh, that you have to loosen to uh, give them uh, to subject them to more control so copyright laws have to be changed that it becomes easier to to monitor and verify and probably we need new control institutions uh, somewhere between data protection authorities and, and monopoly commissions, whether this is a digital agen agency or whatever, it needs to be staffed sufficiently to have uh, impact assessments, to, to run impact assessments and uh, to control individual enterprises with their business models. I could talk about this for hours, but unfortunately I cannot. Another area uh, where we have lots of catching up to do is uh, media competency, digital literacy, uh, uh, we teach, uh, we've been teaching ourselves, uh, and we are probably quite competent in the digital arena, but digital competence, digital literacy encompasses a huge lot. And the question then is, who is going to teach our parents in all this? How are they going to catch up? That's one of the biggest challenges that we face. Large parts of society are very differently, uh, have very different levels of digital literacy in all kinds of areas, and that costs money. If you look at budgets now, where the money is going to in our society, uh, you find that for digital literacy, there is hardly anything, although for about almost 20 years, every politician promises that this is going to be supported and, and, fur and, and furthered and fostered, and, and that is just Im impossible. Another thing, e the e-privacy directive, or uh, Ingo gave a talk this morning from netspolitik.org. Uh, we there have the unique chance to enshrine further consumer rights uh, regarding tracking against the industry, privacy by default in, in browsers, for example, uh, rights to encryption, enforce that. Uh, to have end-to-end -end encryption everywhere, transparency reporting with the authorities. All these things could come with the privacy directive, um, but there is a lot of resistance to, uh, they call it uh, an, an attack on freedom and on free journalism. That's what publishers like to say. So as someone who does free journalism in the net, I have to say there is no attack on free journalism here with the free press. It's an attack on business models that surveil us, that monitor us, and, and use in trans in transparent uh, monitoring and tracking, and you can develop better business model for be models for journalism. Now, let's come to the sunny weather. Before uh, depressing you even more, there are a lot of really good examples here in the Congress from our communities. Uh, you can talk to youth are saying, uh, shows we don't have to be afraid for parts of the youth, they will be better than us. The prototype fund is a good example how you can, with lobbying of a digital civil society, with the science ministry, you could get uh, a million dollars to um, support open source project. This wasn't uh, this way before, that you could get 30 to 50,000 euros for your open source project. It's still easier to get one million Euro for your startup, ask Chris and Linda, then getting 10,000 uh, euros to program a great open source project. But the prototype fund is a great example showing that it can get better, but it's still just a drop on the hot stone. If the federal government always says, um, supporting economy, econ supporting digital economy, we have to say that digital democracy has to be supported as well. We need millions as well, but that doesn't put anything into it and it's a scandal that a digital society gets more money from Google and co uh, than from our state that we pay from our taxes wh whose uh, um, yeah whose task this is to support us there are other great examples they still hope that it would be would get better I just installed my 80 year old uh, aunt signal and she uh, understood it at once. This was great. 
she's sending me uh, funny images, so that's bad, but whatever. But I didn't have to install WhatsApp. Encryption gets easier. Encryption gets the standard. People use email providers that use uh, this. That's a consumer decision we have to further to support um, safe, safe things which will be as reasonable as like um, sorting the trash. Calliope is a great thing that's getting used in the kit space with open hardware educational resources where we have built a small school computer that children uh, eight, eight from year 8 plus can play around with the computer, learn the technique behind it and we have this education stuff. There's this local uh, stuff, the Verschwörhaus, where communities can meet each other and the great thing about it is the city of Ulm is financing it. It's a lighthouse project to show your sh uh, city could do the same. And we have Freifunk. Thanks again because they put down more open or hotspots than most communes and states in the last years. More projects. Uh, air data info. Like there's a sensor for uh, small particles, and it's it's sensing sensing this, and you can put it down onto the net. And we have like 2,000 in Germany alone now. It's a German open data project, and there were no none of these collections so far. Now we can see uh, how bad the the pollution is at Sylvester, like. New Year's likes to see how badly polluted the air, air is right in this moment when we are like having fireworks. And we have Wikipedia, all the open source projects. There's not only reason to get depressive, there's much hope for another digital society and many open source projects presented here you are supporting are these uh, positive visions we have. We have to have enlarged to to further society. That was a short overview. If you want to know more about net political debates in detail, rights and freedom stage by Idri and EFF in Sal one or something uh, has CCL level one has some extra stuff. And I like the motto Tuvat do something. Uh, livable digital society is possible if you fight for it, fight for your digital rights. It's our net, it's your net, and we can fight for our n right, we can defend it, have a positive vision of it, and we always say never give up. It's a long fight, it's a long war, it's a cultural fight, and it's a multiple of these at once analog, digital, uh, open, closed, liberal, ra racist, and we have to fight stand up and uh, keep going and if you can't support those who can do it for you you can use just your uh, uh, donations so thank you very much well yeah that was fast talking marcus he warned against it and he thanked